So I hope you can all see it. Um, yeah, so um, hello from Vancouver. <laughs> um, and there is this like beautiful picture that um, our lab mate Sophie Nitoslavsky and Drew the Drone took. Um, I <laughs> welcome you to my talk and um, thank you, I'm thankful for the like opportunity. Um, I'm a PhD, like second year PhD student with Laurie Nesbitt in the Urban Nature's Lab at UBC. And um, what I'm gonna present today is kind of like, I don't know, like a status update <laughs> of my work. Um, I am currently like finishing up my proposal, which I hope is going to be over in like a few weeks. And um, it's been quite a while. So um, I'm just going to give you like, like a brief overview. Um, so kind of like the main question that I'm like trying to tackle in my research is like, how can I approach the well-being benefits that like urban green spaces provide, taking into account the differences between urban residents. So that was kind of like my basic question. So I came up with this like title that is the like working title in like green spaces for diversity, individual behavior, values and well-being. And my plan for today is kind of like show you the like mini framework that I am going to like put at the base of my research and also to show you like or talk about this like a small study, like a pilot study that I started to conduct here in Vancouver. And that's going to be like the basis for a bigger study that I'm planning. So yeah, I'm happy to get feedback on like any aspect of this because it's like not written in stone yet. Um, all right, so this is the framework that I'm planning to use. And it is like very simple. I don't know, I had like very huge frameworks first and now this like broke down to this very simple and small one. So like theoretically, the mechanism is really simple and clear. We have like empirical, empirical proof of many of these connections. So it's like humans value green spaces because they keep them healthy. Um, then we seek what we value. So we go outside more and this leads to better well-being. And we all know that this is kind of like a very like overly positive um, idea of this. So my plan is to kind of like break down this framework and like how I got up with it. And also as a spoiler, like the main aspect to me is this like daily behavior aspect to like include it in the framework. So that's kind of like what my talk is gonna like lead up to that this is like an important aspect and we can, so should consider this in like a specific way. Um, yeah, so that was my spoiler. Um, um, yeah, to start off, I, I'm gonna like jump right into the middle of the whole framework, like urban green spaces. And this is probably not going to be anything new to you, but like urban green spaces that there's like street trees or uh, I don't know, parks, urban woodlands, open lots, they all provide like just as like any other ecosystem, they provide different services to the humans that live like in and around them. Um, but in urban areas, the needs are kind of like different, at least in the studies that we're like mainly looking at, which are often conducted in the like Western cities. So might not be correct for like every situation, but anyway, this is like the standard we are at uh, right at the moment. And so in these kind of like studies, urban lifestyle comes with like more stress, more sedentary time, more like non-communicable diseases. So in the end, this like cultural dimension of ecosystem services seems to be like the most valued and the most demanded service in cities. So like a place to restore, um, a place to be physically active, a place to socialize. So this is kind of like the focus of my research too, which makes a lot of sense because I have a background in psychology. So obviously I kind of like this shift into um, not looking at, I don't know, yeah, the like tree, like, yeah. I'm not a forester in deep down. So this makes a lot of sense to me. Um, yeah, I spend a lot of time looking at cultural ecosystem services and I bet many of you have. And I know this is like not a typical category of like ecosystem services and also the ecosystem services framework is not like, ideal for sure but I kind of like this kind of like a separation in like there's some immaterial and like more nature focused services like aesthetic appreciation and like education relaxation and then there's also this like more activity bound things that are like recreational uses and activities um the particular like I, I kept reading a lot about like cultural ecosystem services and I tried to like wrap my head around it and what I found really interesting and helpful was this idea that like cultural ecosystem services exist due to people's perception and their use activities. So this is kind of like my first way how, where I was like, oh, I think we should consider like individual behavior rather than just like some some general structure and like some general ecosystems are good because they are like green spaces and cities are good because they are there. I mean, obviously they are in like some aspects like cleaning the air and whatever, but looking at this cultural dimension, it might not be enough that spaces are just there, but we actually have to like use and appreciate or perceive them. And I feel like, yeah, there's like still like some kind of a, I know that there's research on it, but there's still like some kind of a gap. I mean, like there has to be like some human action to appropriate these services. And yeah, generally like, so these two categories that I said before, we can also kind of separate them in like, there are some services we have to perceive and some that we have to use. So these two like 
aspects are very important in this matter. Um, and then also there's like some some characteristics of um, cultural ecosystem services is like that they are like experienced and valued directly kind of like in an in situ thing so they are like space like spatially explicit like I can take like an apple I can take it to my house and like use it there but I cannot really take the green space to my house and like relax there I mean I could take like a brunch but yeah in like general it has to be like space specific so we have to like look at the place and look at the behavior there um, yeah, just like a little excursion of like something that I've been like also including in my framework because I think it is very important if we look at individual differences. Um, and also it was like annoyingly often that the word value comes up and like looking at cultural ecosystem services and it comes up in very different ways and I'm a person who like likes clear categories and it was very hard to like not have those. Um, because for sure, if we have like, as I said before, like if we have some potatoes, they have a value and that's like a product and a value, but like for cultural ecosystem services, we don't have that. Instead, we use the word for like, oh, they are highest valued services or like aesthetic values are a service. So that drove me a little bit crazy. I look deeper into the like value, value, like term. And there's like generally, I mean, in, in language, we all know that there's like different things, how you can use the term value. You can use it in like a financial way and like a societal way. And like in an individual way, so obviously I was most interested interested in this like individual part, like what does the individual value and like what importance or what like significance like does the individual ascribe to a specific place or also to a specific service. And yeah, I just like kind of collected those terms. This is going to be like my third chapter, so that's why I'm like kind of interested in it, but I'm not going to dive deeper into it. So just kind of like as a takeaway, there's a lot of like um we have to con like there's a lot of like individual nuances that we have to consider when we talk about like how valuable spaces are to different people and i feel like often this is very neglected it's just like oh green spaces are good and healthy so we're going to put them and everybody's going to benefit from it and obviously that's not the case but it's also like there's like hard facts why it couldn't why we couldn't like appreciate the service maybe because they're not accessible but there's also like more personal reasons because we might just not find it valuable that this like tree is providing shade maybe i want like an open sunny space so this is kind of like what I want to focus on later. For now, this is just like kind of like lingering up there being like, okay, keep in mind individuals value different things. It's not only about like visible things, but you have to like look more into it in depth. So um, yeah, the idea generally behind the so like biophilia hypothesis or all these like concepts is kind of at the basis, this is like a like an innate drive that we have to like connect to nature and find nature valuable. And this is also kind of like securing our like has secured our survival for many i don't know decades many many years and so this is kind of like in itself like or in in the basis it's kind of like health related which obviously there's like many nuances to it that we can like value things that are not good for our health and even about green spaces but anyway i try to not get too deep into this but like generally the idea is okay we value what is healthy if we look deeper at the like well-being aspect of it all um in theory like green space exposure or interaction leads to health or physical and mental health. Um, and this is kind of like also the basis of the ecosystem services idea because many authors even say like, um, we consider a service what we find like good for health and well being. However, when I want to like look deeper into the mechanisms of how it actually works for like individual people or like individual groups, um, it's more useful to look into the whole like um, public health research than the like actual like ecological side of it. Where they were like defining different pathways like pathways to health and like different mechanisms and how this relationship works and um yeah in theory this is like nice and, and clear but um in reality it's more like this and this is like a framework example from lacquer and jones and this is only one of many examples but i i really like this one because it like defines moderators and mediators which is like very handy if you want to like run like regression analysis later or something so um, they define these like pathways to health. They define them um, as like mechanisms that through which this like relationship works. And interestingly enough, they di differentiate it between perception and uses, which is again like this cultural ecosystem services, um, like how we can appropriate those services. And um, then they also define some moderators, which stem from the fact that they like we can think that like green spaces are beneficial for health. But there's also many studies that show like no results or like even show like negative effects of going outside. And the explanations are that there are different moderators that determine if this relationship is going to be like positive, negative, or even like non-existent. 
And those moderators can like briefly be separated like individual factors and context factors. Um, for example, um, sorry, I'm kind of stuck here. Um, for example, it's like, um, if we say like generally working out outside, like going for a run outside is good for my mental health. But then I'm um, like, I'm a person who's like very afraid of the place that I'm walking around in. So this might actually be very stressful for me and definitely not good for my mental health. So this is like an individual factor, but potentially also a context factor that's like influencing it. Um, yeah, they also define like mechanisms of, of moderation, which I kind of like don't agree with so much. I just put them for like to have the complete model. But yeah, for me, like personal motivation kind of like goes in front of the green space interaction, not like afterwards. <clears throat> okay. To kind of recap on the model, I know I'm like talking pretty fast, but um, I don't know, I don't want to be like repetitive because I know that many things are kind of like basic knowledge of many of you, I guess. Um, but yeah, to kind of recap on the model, we've like seen how like urban green spaces are a particular like situation of like ecosystems. Um, it, yeah, because they are in urban areas. Then we have like the importance of values that is like mainly they are like very individually like and very different. And we have well-being, where it's like this connection of like being in the green doesn't necessarily lead to like well-being in all cases. There are like many, many, many different influences on it. So um, now I'm gonna like look more at this like daily behavior aspect of it all, because to me, as I said, this is kind of like the, the main uh, like part. So if we think about it, that's why I like put this like juggling little person. Um, in like daily life, we have to like juggle a lot of different um, things that we have to do at the same time. Um, a big part of our life obviously is work, but like even if we have free time, we have like a plenty of things to like decide from. And um, there are many, many studies that defined or like that collected all the like influences on like if that like, influence if a person visits a green space or not. So those are like some, and you can see like some are like individual factors like time resources or like garden access and others are like just uh, um, yeah just like of the context like for example allergies or um, yeah I don't know I can't yeah how how crowded the space is for example so I, at first I was thinking of like making also like a huge collection and just like doing a big literature review and like all these and there are already many literature reviews on like all the factors that, in, that influence if we use green spaces or not and what I found really helpful in this context is the, the like notion that research often focuses on different influences on green space use behavior rather than the complexity of decision making or evaluative processes that lead to future behavior. And I was thinking like that is actually what we want to look at. Like it doesn't really matter if I can explain this one specific green space visit, but it matters that I can kind of like predict or like influence that people use green spaces more in the future because that's like ultimately what we want, right? Um, because we suppose it's useful for them and yeah so that is kind of like the base of what I'm like that's what I put as a base for my for my um, survey that I started um yeah it it kind of took a while to like get it running and we started data collection in October so we're still doing it and yeah you can see here all the like variables kind of that I use in my survey so this is based on my framework, but also on this like graphic from Lackwitz and Jones that we saw. And um, yeah, like the one focus is on this like spatially explicit um, behavior in green spaces. So I ask what how people use the space, but also um, what kind of space, how long they stay there, and like where they went afterwards or before to kind of like get a very like good idea of this. Um, yeah, this like spatially explicit visit. And the other focus is on this like more personal connection and on this like evaluative processes, the decision making. This is why I'm asking for specific reasons why people pick this location and why people pick this, yeah, this activity and also this spot. So I gave them like some options like location characteristics and aesthetics, well being and attachment. And I also looked at this. Um, I don't know if you like saw in the model from Lakowitz and Jones that they had like the uses as mechanisms, but also the perception of the place and the perceived benefits. So this is like where the whole like value idea comes in again, because I might like walk through a green space on my way to work every day, but I don't actually value it because I just find it very annoying that there's like branches on the floor or whatever, and I can't bike because it's so like wobbly the street. So it's like actually important if people like perceive a benefit 
And I'm curious to see if that actually like reflects on their health or not. Like, does it matter if I enjoy the visit that I'm paying to the green space or not? So yeah, I found this like a very interesting concept and integrated it in my survey. And then I'm also like asking people about their like health and well-being, which is like matched to the Canadian um, household survey. So now we can compare it maybe on like, um, yeah, I don't know, I asked for like neighborhoods because I, I can't like ask too many, like have too many participants. But yeah, so we can compare it to like some census data maybe. And then I also asked about like a lot of demographics. Um, yeah, which you see oh, yeah, on the next slide. So generally the idea of my survey is that research so far, often when people look at green space use, they just like stand in the like front of a park and that makes for a very biased sample because obviously you can only like get the re responses of the people that use this specific place. Um, and I wanted to kind of like counter that by giving people the opportunity to point themselves to like which places they went to, but still having it like spatially explicit so I used this like this tool and the, from the ArcGIS survey one, two, three connect, which is kind of a little bit complicated to use. I don't know if anybody has like experience with it. Um, and, but, but in the end, everything turned out fine. And you can have a map that I'm going to show you in the next slide and um, where people like point out where they went. So I have this like spatially explicit information and they map out kind of like which services they enjoyed there and like what they did there. So yeah that's kind of like the gain I have because also in my lab we're working with like mobile data or drone data as you saw and this is always like super interesting and in seeing like how where the like big chunks of people go but still it doesn't show us about this like reasons and like why do people choose this space why do they choose to do this activity and yeah so this is kind of like filling into this gap hopefully um yeah as I said I was aiming for like a representative sample you can see so far uh, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I still have to like, at least get another, um, like do more like targeted advertising for like specific age groups and also like ethnic groups. Although the, the graph is kind of like twisted because um, people could like check different options. So it's not actually hundred percent that we're like um, displaying here. But yeah, just to give you like an overview that that's kind of like the goal to make it more representative than many other studies so far. And um, yeah, this is the map to just like kind of show off my nicest results so far. <laughs> and yeah, that made me very happy to see like that, that people use different parks and that also like sometimes we see that like several people use the same spot. Um, so kind of like a little like summary of like what we know or like some ideas, like we're gonna find out that like where people went on a given day, what they did there and with whom. And if the location, place, characteristics, well-being, or attachment were amongst their reasons to visit, and then how healthy they generally are, and like many other things that we can, I don't know, I just wanted to like give an idea of like what kind of analysis we're gonna be able to make uh, to do. Um, yeah, just like this is my pilot study. So like the big thing that I don't know is how this one-time behavior reflects on their usual patterns and priorities. So just because somebody went to a green space this one time doesn't necessarily show me like, oh, they really value this and they're gonna like do this in the future and this is good for their health. Like they could just be healthy people and happen to be outside today. So my actual plan is to do like a, yeah, do like a daily diary study. And the whole idea behind this to kind of like get back to the daily behavior um, graphic that I had before is that I don't only want to like look at these like isolated green space visits, but I want to consider different options that they have, like not, not explicitly, but like consider the fact that they have like different options in life and that they choose from this, from all these options and like chilling on the couch with the family or walking, taking a walk outside. Um, so like what drives people to like make this choice or make it like the subconscious choice. And in that context, I was looking into like motivational theory and it can get like very complicated. And there's like, I don't know, like 200 definitions of motivation um, and a very like easy kind of theory that I found helpful in this context um, is from Wood and Quinn. And they say that that's like basically two drivers of everyday behavior and either behave like many behaviors are habits and other behaviors are intentional behavior. And this works really well for the whole um, green space visit context. Because obviously, like sometimes it's just a habit to like walk to a place. And I mean, a habit is something that used to be intentional in a way, but at some point it just got kind of like automated. And I feel like this makes a lot of sense when we like 
I know every time we like have the intention to go outside, but then we get it, sit in, like we enter the house and we see the couch and the couch kind of triggers the behavior of like, I should sit down. And that's like how habits get to be. Like they are not actually like intentional anymore, but they are like a habit uh, in like, it's automatic behavior that's triggered by like the context factors. And interestingly, habits are often connected to like negative emotions. Um, because people feel like they're not really realizing they're like, like, they're not showing their like self identity. And this is very much tied to like what people want to do and what people don't want to do and what they feel like they are kind of like forced to do by like their habitual behavior. And then there's intentions when we all know, like I have the intention to like go outside three times a week and for 20 minutes, I have the intention to like get skinnier, I have the intention to like be fitter. And um, so this is very much connected to like my personal like ideas, and my personal goals. So this is really interesting. And like, I feel like for me, like practically, it makes a lot of sense because when I was doing this like survey and I was wondering like, why do people go there? And then I asked you, what is, was your reason to like going through this spot? And like, oftentimes you don't have a reason to go somewhere. Obviously on a Sunday, you might decide to like take a walk and like, I don't know, Central Park in Burnaby because it's a great park. But then also many times you just like happen to walk along a green space and both of these could be beneficial and both of these could be relevant for your health, but just like, it's hard to capture both. So yeah, my plan is to like, um, include both of these in my future re research and yeah that's I'm kind of like at the end there that um, so my goal for like my actual like research for this for which this was like a pilot is to find out which behavior is intentional and which is habitual and there we explore like personal values and well-being in the context of daily green space visits so I'm kind of like going to frame it in this kind of differentiation and um, by that I can detect between person or between group patterns and within person variability because like um my my intention might change from day to day and i want to know why that is and um these like factors can lie within myself being like today i'm feeling like less motivated or like i'm kind of sad and so i'm not really strong will or they might lay in the environment be like oh the weather is really bad so i'm deciding to not go outside today which is kind of a thing in vancouver so the method is going to be like a daily diary questionnaire and um, where they have like the daily questionnaire that is kind of going to be similar to what I did before um, about their green space visit, like pointing them out and the reasons for it and what they did there. But the new thing now is like that the same person is going to do this questionnaire several times and it's going to cover weekends and weekdays and potentially different seasons. That's going to kind of depend on the funding and all, but we're still kind of like working on that. So yeah, I'm kind of at the end. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't like run to it through it too much. Um, yeah, those are kind of like my open questions that I have because I feel like a daily diary is still kind of like a big effort and it's a lot of effort that the like participants have to put into it. So I kind of want to make sure it's kind of like um, the most convenient for them. So yeah, I'm like thinking which tool I should use. Um, the survey one, two, three connect is nice, but I kind of can't make a reminder for them to like be like, okay, every evening do the survey. And um, then I don't even know if I want them to like do it in the evening or could they even do it like right after a visit, but that might, yeah, that might also be like some people do it right after, some people do it during, some people do it an hour after. So yeah, then like, how do I measure well-being to not only make it general, but yeah, make it more, um, more targeted to the specific day. Yeah, and then like different other aspects. Um, yeah, not uh, the, yeah, at least also the like, what kind of analysis I'll do and that's gonna be like a whole different um, situation. So. Yeah, I'm happy to discuss anything. Um, I know it might have been like a bit fast. And yeah, if anybody wants to like comment on it or has like any, I don't know, any tips, I'm happy to do it. And if not, then done. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Joanna. It was very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Uh, maybe we can start with uh, questions or suggestions or comments on the, I. My understanding is that you're not necessarily looking for feedback on the presentation outlet. Is oh, no, yeah. And is more, more the, the idea. So, uh, I, yeah, I, either way, like if somebody's like, no, this like talking about ecosystem services is like super irrelevant, then like obviously that's also good feedback. <laughs> but I'm not really taking this presentation to like any other place like anytime soon. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, Camilo, was that a clap or is that a raised hand? I'm not sure. It looks like a clap. <laughs> that's not a, that's just the clap <laughs> okay great so i have a but when the when the time comes it would be nice um, oh, for some questions i have questions as well so 
Yeah, no, no worries. So Rita, go ahead for your question or comment. Hi, Wana. Um, I really like it. I, I'm mostly um, raising my hand so that maybe we can um, talk afterwards. I'm doing a similar study with data from Montreal. Um, so I have three different measures of well-being. Um, so we can talk about that later, like I'm using subjective happiness, emotional well-being and perceived well-being. And for each one of them, it was different questionnaires. Um, yeah, thank you. I, yeah, I definitely want to include the emotional well-being. I haven't seen much about that. And I think it's like very tied to this whole like, do I like, I, I don't know, can I like self-actualize? I don't know. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so maybe we can like set up a meeting afterwards. Also, like we talk about um, the general health. So we also had like questions about self-rated health. Mm -hmm. And then we are using that in the model just as a covariate. Um, oh, okay. So that could be probably something that you could also include. That, of course, in the end, it depends how long you want your questionnaire, but that could be a way. Um, yeah, and if it works pretty well, and then they have different questions and normal, it's just always self-rated also like for well-being. But for instance, it's, it's, um, it's the same questionnaire is for the emotional well-being. So you have the general health and then for the emotional well-being. Um, I have just one question. I think I missed it. How many participants do you have already or? Uh, for my like the study right now we have like 170 that are like actually like eligible because they are in Vancouver I had like more than that but because we advertised via Twitter it was like <laughs> like many people from Ontario I'm like I'm sorry but this doesn't really like show, tell me much about Vancouver so yeah so far 170 and we were aiming for like about 200 so I'm kind of like have to look at who's going to be eligible in the end to be like included in analysis and so far we just keep recruiting a bit more okay and I was also wondering about like the like you start your questionnaire now in October but is yeah. this like the time that people use the green spaces the most? Surprisingly, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> they were like, I, I, I bet in summer there would have been way more. But yeah, it was not the way that we planned it. There was like some like backlog with the with this like tool and also with the ethics. That was like first they were like, oh yeah, some main, minor comments, and they was like, but still there's like this and that that you should like pay attention to. So yeah, it was kind of like not intended to be that late, but um, yeah, it was like kind of low key to like distribute it. So we we might even like pull it up again in like a different season and surprise like, I was very happy like so far I had like 80 green space visits recorded because we also have like non-visitors so we can like compare their like health or like routines so yeah I was quite happy to like for everybody who <laughs> went outside <laughs> yeah yeah I just yeah I don't know like just like depending on how long you run your study so just to try to get as more as many participants as possible then your seasonality may change so yeah. I don't know, like, I can you do that? Like, I can tell you we have um, about 800 participants. Um, and I got feedback that it was not large enough, that it was a very small sample. Yeah. <laughs> I dare to disagree, but that was the, the feedback that, that I got. Really? Um, but I think it just, it was with medical people and I guess they are just used to these huge cohorts of people because otherwise I, I was pretty happy. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> yeah, so just so if have this kind of feedback, I, I had that feedback, but I, I tend to disagree with them when I try to reason, but I thought it was already pretty good. And my sample is way more biased than yours. Uh, in terms of ethnicity, I have 90% of white people, for instance. Yeah, I wish we, like, as I said, it's still like, because many of the like, white people like took like, like kind of check different boxes but like I'm white but also this and that so yeah. I kind of like have to clean it for that but it is quite like there's quite some like representativeness because we had like a great great advertisement we at Twitter so I feel like that um, helped a lot thanks to Kit <laughs> and yeah so that that was great but um, it's kind of like a pilot study to kind of like test the method for this like daily diary which is not going to have that many participants because it's just like too big of an effort like for, to ask from the participants and so we're probably going to have like like have many records for one person, but not so many participants in general, which like to me, because I'm from like psychology background, I hope that the sample should be fine. Like this is kind of like 200 people. This is kind of like what I would expect and what I've been good, but yeah, it's a good information to know like 800 is apparently not enough. That's shocking. 
<laughs> yeah, but I, I really guess it's like people with very different backgrounds coming from from a little different thing. But about this diary, is something I'm not using, but I have this. No, I forget the name. But there is this measure of immediate happiness or something like that. Yeah. And then it's like for this kind of studies where you have like I think it's like five times a day where they yeah. have to score like their happiness. So I don't know if they can set the alarm, but it's something like they have to do once they get up, um, lunchtime, whatever. Yeah. And then it's a different, um, a different, different uh, outcome that you can measure. And yeah. I, I had that but just for a very small sample, so we didn't use that. Oh, but, interesting. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. thinking about that. Yeah, kind of like how to like actually like um operationalize it in a way that's this, this kind of like momentarily ecological assessment that would be I ideal to do it but yeah um oh nice i'd be very happy to talk about that you can just like if you send me an email we can just have like a, a chat and like talk I, i'm analyzing the data so i'm really into that right now so if you just want to do it just send me an email and we can talk that would about be amazing it. yeah thank okay. you that would be very cool for sure thank you. perfect uh, Laura, I noticed you took your hand down. Did you still have your question? No, it was about, um, yes, my question was about um, what is a good number of, uh, you know, uh, repentance. So it, that wasn't the same with Enrita because we are kind of exploring if we can do this in the lab, but I don't have this kind of uh, social background. So for me, like, I don't know what is a good uh, <laughs> amount of service in so yeah, so everything is answered <laughs> now from right. the discussion. I, yeah, I See? think that also can, yeah, sorry. It no, depends on like what analysis you want to do with it. Like I know that like the, I can do like regression and like, I don't know, like correlations, but um, if I want to actually like model it or want to do like some mediation analysis that that's not going to like work out well, I think. Yeah, Just but there's like- I don't think that's the main problem. Well, depending if you only have 100, et cetera. Like in my case, it was just like, they were criticizing that could not extrapolate for the entire population um, okay. so it was the critic was more in that sense that what kind of conclusions you could get from a study like that okay yeah i'll keep that in mind for sure i hope to have like the, yeah sorry yeah no worries camilo your turn go ahead thank you Benoit. um first of all my connection is a little bit unstable so if I come on and off, um, please let me know to repeat myself. Um, thank you, Johanna, for the very interesting presentation. As you know, I, I, I have done some research in this space and this presentation was very interesting to me. Uh, first of all, I would like to... Oh, yeah. Lost you right at a good time yeah. to me. Turn your camera down, maybe it will help. Trying to communicate that at complexity in, in, in very simple ways. We uh, lost the start of uh, your question, uh, Camilo. Uh, I, I, of course, have lots of questions. No, we but, lost uh, the start of it. We didn't hear the beginning. Sorry. Uh, Hello? Yeah. My mm -hmm. connection is very bad. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, just repeat the beginning of the question. Yeah, this is what happens when you're in the middle of the jungle. Uh, no, what I was just starting was just thanking Joanna for for reducing the complexity. Yeah, the uh, the the connections that we have in Colombia they're not very good. Um, but I have a question. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to make this very very short because my connection is very unstable. But I would like to know, Joanna, how are you, since you started to talking about values and you really wanted to measure the relationship between values, well-being and behavior, how are you measuring? Oh, sorry. I only heard like, how are you measuring? And then I don't get what. Values. Oh. Um, OK, so I hope I got the question right. Um, I'm. I'm kind of, I kind of like for this, like uh, kind of like study on the daily behaviors. I'm more like using this proxy of like perceived benefits in a way. And this is like not directly values, but this is kind of like aiming at like how people perceive their environments and like how this is tied to what they find valuable or not. But um, for this third chapter of my thesis, which I, so I, I kind of felt like it's such a big topic that I kind of like, 
I extrapolated it and gonna use it for the third chapter. And then I'm gonna like use like some scale, like probably like place place attachment in a way. Um, and also take people on like walking interviews, just like asking how how connected they feel to the space and how they use it and how this kind of like yeah, why why they use the space and how this kind of lead, like if that makes them feel better, like feel well or not. So yeah, I, I figure that this is very hard to capture in this kind of like daily questionnaire. Um, but which is why I want to like use some different methods for that in the last chapter. So like answer your questions. Or... Ah, yeah, how am I? Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. Okay. Um, we I, uh, yes. did that answer your question, uh, Camilla? Um, I I saw that. Sorry, I I just read the part about the beliefs and um yeah I I started thinking about that because we were talking about the the other survey that you did in Toronto and I know like employing in Vancouver too and yeah I'm I'm not sure I think it's it's a different thing for me like not beliefs but like actual values more like this importance and significance of it um this like individual importance and this is like tied to some tied to some beliefs but like in do I find this valuable uh, do I find this like healthy or not which is kind of like what more the belief series is, but also I can value something and it's not healthy. So just like, it's important to me. So yeah, I am have not having this like operationalized yet, but I have like some ideas on it. And I think beliefs doesn't catch it fully. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to, we can talk. This information is flowing in as you are speaking. Um, There was a last little part of the question. I don't know if you wanted to follow up on that, Joanna. Um, so I'm trying. I, I think that probably at like some point we, it would be great to like have a talk about that too, because I feel like you're like a very big expert, and I've read many papers of you, Camilo. So yeah, I think it would be great if we could like um, discuss that. I'm now kind of like in this whole like daily diary thing because I already started the the data collection, but yeah, it's definitely not showing the picture of values in that way. Okay, <clears throat> I'll ask one last question before we move on to, to talking about the website quickly. Um, it's from uh, Romain Yagar, who's in France right now, and he's in, in the public space in the library, I think, where he cannot speak. And so I'm just going to read his question that he asked in the chat. Um, he was wondering, in order to disentangle the habitual versus intentional behavior, would it be possible to add a question in your survey related to the recurrence of green space visits, like every day, once a week, twice a week, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, like I didn't do it yet. I just asked if this is like regular behavior for them or not, which I feel like is kind of like too too broad. Like it still gives us a good information and we can like report on that. But yeah, I'm definitely going to ask like, um, or like maybe even have people ask, say like, okay, which are like your usual spaces that you visit and how often would you visit them? And then see like, okay, and how does does how do you behave this week because it might be very different like it might still be like we can't follow them for a year or something so it has to be like a week so i think that would be a very important measure to kind of like yeah get at it is, is that has been like a usual week or not and sometimes people don't even realize what are their like habits and whatnot so yeah i think that would be a very interesting comparison <laughs> 